Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 217 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to alert you, the listeners who are struggling with psoriasis. If you've got this diagnosis, you must be aware that there are other health concerns that you may be more susceptible to. Unfortunately, these health issues are commonly ignored or overlooked. Some clients and community members have been told by their doctor that there's nothing you can do, so why worry about it? But frankly, if you're here listening to this show, I imagine that you do actually care about these issues and would want to know if they're going on. And like me, you probably would want to know what you could do to support your body better so it doesn't simply stay on this downward slide. I personally find it so troubling that the attitude exists in certain corners of conventional medicine that you just do nothing until you're sick enough. Only then do you get meds to quote unquote manage the problem. In my personal opinion, which was honestly shaped by my father who was a medical doctor and surgeon, that's incredibly reactive and presents problems that you might not ever have had to have faced if only attention was paid to crucial factors while possibly implementing helpful interventions sooner. Since I'm sure you'd rather not deal with another problem on top of psoriasis, let's talk about these other health issues that you need to be on the lookout for. The first issue associated with psoriasis that I've actually talked about before is thyroid problems. This came on my radar when a psoriasis client ran the full labs that I recommend on skinterrupt.com only to discover that her TSH was insanely high at 33. And for context, optimal TSH is between one and two. I immediately referred her to an endocrinologist who got her on medication to help normalize her levels, which vastly improved a number of her complaints. My client actually shared her journey in episode 148 of the Healthy Skin Show to help raise awareness about this thyroid issue because of how profoundly this one piece of her journey was for her. But the key thing that I want you to take away from this story that I haven't mentioned yet is that until this point in time when she came across my list of labs, no one had ever checked her thyroid. I'm not sure why her symptoms, which were alarming, frankly, at that point, were continuously blown off, but action was taken once she had the test results in hand to prove that her issues were something more serious. Now, research points toward an increase in Hashimoto's and other thyroid issues when you're diagnosed with psoriasis, which I have discussed at length in episode 101. If you have not had your thyroid checked or it isn't being checked annually with your blood labs, I highly recommend that you request that your provider begin at least including TSH annually, especially if you find that your symptoms are similar to those of low thyroid function, including fatigue, weight gain or trouble losing weight, feeling cold or difficulty regulating your body temperature to stay warm dry skin or dry rashes, thinning hair or hair loss, constipation, depression, muscle weakness, low libido, elevated cholesterol labs, puffiness in your face, and swelling in the lower part of the front of your throat where your thyroid is. Now, this isn't a complete list, but sharing a list of whatever the issues are that you have when you ask your doctor to test your thyroid is helpful for them to know. Now, a full thyroid panel is much more than TSH and includes TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, TPO antibodies, and thyroglobulin antibodies. And as I said, TSH isn't everything. 
it's really honestly not even the best marker to understand the full picture of thyroid health, but it may be the only thing your doctor will run, unfortunately. And if that's the case, you can always run a full thyroid panel yourself through certain third-party lab testing websites with pre-negotiated rates to keep tabs on things yourself. Now on to the next area you need to worry about, and that is metabolic health. So metabolic issues seem to go hand in hand with psoriasis, which underscores the necessity even more to focus on blood sugar control. Weight gain and obesity also tend to have a negative impact on disease severity. To illustrate the connection between psoriasis and blood sugar control, a fascinating 2019 study found that out of the 400 patients with severe chronic plaque psoriasis, 53% were insulin resistant, while 22% had type 2 diabetes. The association between diabetes and psoriasis is very well known, with some as recent as 2020 questioning if they are somehow more interconnected than simply just comorbidities for each other that possibly there are genetic and other factors that we have yet to consider tying them together. One recent paper suggested including the diabetic medication called metformin for psoriasis treatment plans. The authors noted that, quote, combination therapy with metformin and methotrexate has also been shown to be more effective in treating psoriatic arthritis than methotrexate alone, end quote. And that, quote, from the perspective of quality of life, combined therapy with metformin and methotrexate significantly improves the quality of life of patients with psoriasis compared with therapy with methotrexate alone, end quote. I'm not necessarily advocating for you to take more medication, but this is interesting enough that I felt it worthwhile to bring to your attention. Because berberine, which is a botanical similar in nature to metformin, shows promise in altering the cytokine inflammatory issue associated with psoriasis, as well as helping to support blood sugar levels. It's one reason I use it in my practice with clients where it is appropriate. So please, before you go out and buy yourself a bottle of berberine online, talk with your practitioner before adding this into your regimen, as it can negatively interact with diabetic medication or make issues worse for those with low blood sugar. And of course, it always is possible to be allergic to it. So check with your practitioner first. And since we're talking about metabolic health, I wanted to also mention the link found in a large 2020 retrospective population-based cohort study showing that those with PCOS, also known as polycystic ovary syndrome, have a higher risk of developing psoriasis. The risk was higher for those under 20 years old, but even higher for those over the age of 50. So in terms of testing, a fasted glucose test isn't sufficient as the only blood sugar marker that your doctor runs on you. My recommendation would be to ask your doctor to include the hemoglobin A1C marker, which provides an average of blood sugar for the past three to four months, in addition to a fasted comprehensive metabolic panel. The fasted insulin marker might also be of benefit, as would monitoring your own glucose levels with either an at-home blood glucose finger stick test or a continuous glucose monitor. And the last area that I'd like to highlight for you today would be the connection between psoriasis and liver issues. More specifically, I'm talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and fibrosis of the liver. Now, if we jump back a moment to that 2019 study with the 400 participants who had severe chronic plaque psoriasis, researchers found that 50% of the psoriasis participants had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and 14.1% also had advanced liver fibrosis. I've also personally seen enough labs from psoriasis clients at this point to see the common trend of elevated liver enzymes on their fasted comprehensive metabolic panels. Often it's blown off until the liver enzymes are quite high and only then is the additional liver test known as GGT run and possibly a liver ultrasound. This is a shame because the prevalence of liver issues is likely higher than most realize. 
A recent report published in April of 2021 demonstrated that out of 215 patients with moderate to severe psoriasis, 42.3% had some degree of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease ranging from mild to severe in status. Those with psoriasis and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease tended towards a more severe disease presentation, along with, quote, significantly higher levels of tumor necrosis factor alpha, transforming growth factor beta, and IL-23 than those without non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, end quote. There's also some papers connecting the dots between psoriasis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and issues associated with the gut. But that's a lengthy topic for another podcast episode. So for now, if you're interested in that, you could go back and check out episodes 69 and episode 91. It's my hope that sharing this information will empower you to get better care and also become proactive, especially if you don't currently have these issues, so that you can keep an eye on them and even make changes now that could have positive ramifications down the road. Now, if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this, or you want to see the resources I've put together for you, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 217 so we can keep the conversation going. And if you're in a Facebook group or know someone who is a fellow psoriasis warrior, this is really important to pass along because it's much too often that people find out about these issues associated with psoriasis after they're already struggling with them. Educating those in this community gives everyone the opportunity to ask better questions, get appropriate testing run, and hopefully avoid or deal with more efficiently whatever you are faced with sooner rather than later. And before you head off for your day, take a moment, please, to rate and review the Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform, then hit the subscribe button so you never miss a weekly dose of our research, tips, strategies, and alternative steps you can take to rebuild healthy skin. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.